On arrival, this was not cooling. It was locked out on a head pressure fault. So let's open it up. This coil is pretty plugged up. You can get it clean, but let's take a look at it. I mean, it's not even that matted, but it is pretty closed up. So the head pressure probably went pretty high today. It's only about 80 degrees. I had like 340 head pressure, but I mean, you can see air is really not getting through this too well. And a lot of the coils like that. So see over here, I mean, air is still finding its way through, but it's mostly around the coil. So it's just heating up and heating up. Look at the rug in the back. Look at that. That is pretty, pretty ratty. This is definitely blocking most of the airflow. And it's a double coil, so. And I'm gonna clean all that out real fast. And I'll start cleaning the coil. First, I like to clean the bottom stuff out so the drain's open so that the water can go right through. It also helps because it's a heat pump. It freezes in the winter. You need the water to drain out quick. Not perfect, but a lot better than it was. So now I just got to break through all this stuff. It shouldn't take too long. But I mean, it's a double coil. So hopefully, and I'm coming through it, as you can see. But, which means that first coil is not plugged up or else I wouldn't come through like the, the middle of both coils isn't too plugged up or else I wouldn't be doing this and I'm not trying to clean from the outside this way because I'm just going to be pushing that stuff inside the coil but a double coil you don't want to push this on the inside you want to push it off the coil Sometimes you gotta get a lot of it wet for it to get heavy and full. But if you spray in on this, you're gonna push this into, the, into your coil. And it's very hard unless you split your coil once you get all that compacted. Especially on these little residential units. It's easier on the bigger units because they split easier. It's still, I mean, splitting coil sucks. But some, some coils, you gotta do it. So I'm gonna clean all this up. Up and down motions help break it off. You don't have to just shoot down, shooting down helps. But like this, sometimes if you come up with it, you lift it up and off. So I mean, you're, you're, the whole thing is you're just trying to get most of the stuff off. I'm gonna soap it, but before I soap it, I try to get most of what's on here off. So then the soap helps lift out whatever's still on that coil. and inside the coil. So if you're trying to soap through that stuff, you kind of, it blocks the soap a little from really soaping up that coil. Now, if you want to hose this way, go straight down just to knock some of the stuff off the outside. You're not looking to blow through it, 
you're looking to send the stuff down off that coil. Okay, so now I'm going to soap it up. And I'm going to spray it through, same way I've been doing, inside out. Because the dirt's coming in this way, so I'm pushing it right back out like it came in. So, we'll set it to see. I want to get it through the coil. Some people are like, oh, you use too much. Can you really use too much? If the unit needs it. Think of it this way, if it really needs it, you should build it into every job before bottle. You may not need it, but just in case, it's there. People say you gotta go up and down, but up and down works, but you just gotta get it to the coil. You don't know want to rinse it, so if you put on right back out. So this helps you pull them out with whatever dirt has gotten in. It helps it get pushed off. And now to rinse it back off. This is where I do the up and down, trying to get as much of the soap out as possible so it doesn't get trapped and left with. I mean, I've already given this thing a pretty good cleaning. This is just getting whatever is really in there, hopefully out. And up and down motions because stuff's on the bottom of those fins, not just the top. And you want to control that tip you don't want to spray the coil bat wrong. Next thing you know, you're folding it over. I'm going to rinse this thing down the rest of the way, and then let's check how it operates. Alright, so there's the finished product. Nice and clean. So I gotta put it back together and we'll see how it runs. How I quickly dry off a condenser while I'm putting panels on. I'm not gonna let it run too long, but this way at least it's dry so when I start running it, I'm not waiting for it to dry out all that water. I'm going to stop it now. So now I have it running and it's operating, but I have another problem. Check this out. So I'm overcharged. I have one degree of superheat, 10 degrees of subcool. This unit only wants three degrees of subcool. I have a CBX 25 UH and the charge on that, the CBX 3 ton 25 UH is three so I am overcharged at 10 I can't pick up my return probe from here but I'm almost got a 20 degree split here but that is no good that one degree is subcool so I'm gonna have to recover some refrigerant as I'm operating Using a recovery cylinder and using the unit, I am going to do a recovery without a recovery pump. So what I got to do is instead of off the suction line, I'm putting my T here that I usually charge with. Got my probe connected so I can read. I got to use the side with the pin to come over here. So I'm going to close the valve. Kind of just tighten this real fast. The minimus. The minimus, the minimus. Now I got a virgin, so let's take this off. And we're gonna make it no longer a virgin. We're gonna break the virgin in. It's gonna get used and abused and pounded and grounded. Oh, I busted it right open. Okay, now we're gonna connect here. But now here's the thing. I don't wanna get air in here and contaminate this refrigerant in case I wanna put some back. So now let's open this perched. Now I got the air out. Okay, so now 
we're going to get the refrigerant, some of it, into this cylinder because we can't be operating like this. That's just too much subcool and the superheat is like non-existent. So now open this up. And well, here we go. We're gonna fire some in. We're filling we're shooting high pressure right into that can, so check probes, okay. Okay, so now let's see. We don't want to put too much. Let's see where we settle. If we put too much, we just pull it back out, but see what happens with this. Now I should on the superheat side should start to rise now not yet we'll give it a second or two because that suction line should start to get a little colder I mean a little warmer sorry it'll get a little warmer because we're flooding back we're sludge we're just flooding back liquid refrigerant at this point it'll go slower through the evaporator now causing it to boil off more that may not have been enough yet Subcooling's dropping though. Let's see where that goes. This takes a little while. I mean, I have my hose. I got a lot of hose there to wrap up and put away, so. I mean, we only went up a decimal point there. Not like it's a big change, but. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire a little more in the cylinder. And then. Put, a, put at least one of these hundred I have a hundred foot a 50 foot and another hundred foot going to the water valve so sub cooling is almost back up so what I'm gonna do now is again fire more in close it okay let's see where are we at right now Suction hasn't come up much, but it's okay. Uh-oh, suction actually went down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I mean, I doubt it's a TXV problem where the TXV is pinned open. But you never know if somebody put a little gas in here. Liquid line's 84. What's outside town? Okay, let's see what we are out here. Give that a minute. Suction line is dropped. Mm, we're going down. Now we're coming back up. Okay. Let's see. I want to see a big move. Big move there. What are we outside? We're 78. Okay. So, outdoor measurement. Not like this matters, but... 78. Boom. Mm, Got to get rid of more refrigerant. What hap the only problem with doing this is this takes a little while and then all of a sudden you go a little too far and then you got to put it back in. But it is coming out very slowly though. Every once in a while this gasket gets a little man mangled I believe and it closes the port. I could be wrong but I, that's what I believe it happens sometimes. So... But sub cool, as you see, I'm down to six. So that's lowering. My superheat, though, isn't. I doubt my TXV is just stuck wide open. So let's. And what you also got to watch out for is this can. Can you get too hot or too cold? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this now and switch this over. So close this valve up. I'm with the whatever's in the hose out. The Minimus, the Minimus. My neighbor's cat is named the Minimus. I think it is so cool that she named it that. Way before I met her or anything, but it's like the minimus. I mean, and he hangs out in my yard. I've seen him sleeping on my deck. The other night, he went into my frigging garage. 
I was outside my garage doing something and I see him like go in the garage. I'm like, where are you going, dude? Okay, so downfall right now is that I'm not seeing any improvement right now. But we will. Alright, so we're adding stuff to the can. Like I said, sooner or later what's going to happen is this number is going to start to go up. Okay. Close it. Right back up. I'm just waiting for that suction line to start to rise in temperature. Because this is still pretty cold, 41 for a suction. That's an airflow problem right there, it looks like. Oop, superheat's now starting to rise. Up, down. Subcool's right where I want it, so. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the hose away and I'll be back. I just got back. We're at. I only wrapped up one hose. I figured I would check on it because I always like to see what's happening. I'm at five degrees of superheat now. Subcool's at three. I mean, it is rising. I don't know if it's balanced out or if it's still going up. But I mean, this is a lot better than it was. So I'm gonna wrap another hose and then come back and see. I don't want to take too much out though because my subcool is almost right where it should be. So that's why I'll wrap up. Oh, see at 45. So I mean my suction line is warming up. Let's see where it's at after I wrap up another hose. Alright, so I've recovered some refrigerant. All my hoses are away, cleaned up, nozzles are gone, I think. I don't see the nozzle. There it is. I still have the nozzle, but all right, so now here is where I'm at with this charge. After what I removed, as you could see, it actually helped a lot. Now I got a system I feel comfortable with. Look at that. We got 14 degrees of superheat, almost 4 degrees of subcool. Suction's 54. We're not slugging back liquid. We're actually boiling off the refrigerant and the evaporator like we're supposed to. Subcooling is dead on on the money. I can't show you the split. I took those probes out already because the system shut off. So I went upstairs. I went from 75 down to this. So I'm pretty satisfied with what I'm seeing. I mean, and this is how you recover. You're just pretty much shooting liquid refrigerant out of the high side valve right into your recovery tank. But look, you're gonna, oh no, I thought that was all sweat. Sometimes you'll have things sweat up, but those are pretty good numbers. Let's see, even the discharge I have connected. I like to connect my discharge because then you know what your condenser is actually doing. I've got 132 before the condenser, and then after the condenser, we have 84. So if your condenser is not cool, well, not cooling down the refrigerant enough, causing it to subcool, you won't have as big of a split there. There's times with water-cooled systems when your condenser's plugged, you'll have the same temp in and out. You got nothing happening inside your condenser. That's where it comes in handy having three probes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little adventure, this little repair. Till next time, I'm Bill and I am out.